Welcome to Real Life Mentoring, where we explore real life issues to help you make an authentic difference in the world. Today, Chris talks about the importance of making a list of what you might want and need in a good mentor. Hi, everyone. This is uh, Chris with Real Life Mentoring Podcast. I'm on my own today, as Christina will not be on this episode with me, but I look forward to yeah, talking about an aspect of mentoring that uh, I believe is really important. And so uh, thanks for joining me today. So as a, a guy who has mentored men for many years, and as a guy who has been mentored some as well, it was a few years ago, I was seeking out a mentor for myself. And I wanted some specific things in this mentoring relationship. And so I thought, well, I will sit down and I will make a list. In fact, so that's what I want to talk to you about today is the importance of making a list if you want a mentor, and what a what a gift it is, I believe, to have a mentor. Make a list. You know, we, we make all kinds of lists for things like I'm going to make a list to go to the grocery store. I'm going to make a list of things I want to accomplish this year. I want to make a list of maybe things I want to achieve in, with my health, with my nutrition, with my fitness goals, things like that. And so what if you made a list of, of things you would like in a mentoring relationship for your mentor to be. So I'd like to go over some of those in this episode with you. So as I was sitting down at, the, at my desk and opened my journal, took my pen, and I began to say, okay, God, I want to I wanna have a mentor this year. And there are some specific things. So I pray about everything. And so God, show me what are some things that I want and need? Because those are two categories that are both important in seeking out a mentor. There are things we need in having a mentor, but there are some things that we just want as well. And so we'll, we'll, I'll talk about both of those um, with you guys. But, well, the first thing I put down, I wanted a man of God. I wanted someone who would speak truth to me. And I specifically say a man of God because I want a man who would mentor me to seek out wisdom from God. Man's wisdom is good to a point, but we get to a point we hit a brick wall and we only have so much knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Well, and I actually believe that apart from God, man has no wisdom. That is, if you believe in the Bible, that's biblical. So I said, I would, my first shot priority, I would like to have as my mentor, a man of God, someone who would speak truth to me, who would know God's word, not a theologian, but someone who, who reads it and studies it and applies it to his life. And someone I could say, Chris, this is what God says in this situation. Another aspect I put down, another thing that I wanted, I wanted a man to have the courage to be real, to be transparent. One of the great benefits I've discovered in mentoring is the opportunity for two men and or two women to come together and experience real transparency where everything's put on the table. At some point, such trust is built between these two people, a mentor and a mentee, that everything can be talked about. But I can tell you that takes courage because I don't like admitting. I don't wake up in the morning going, I get to admit my faults, my sins, my mistakes, my my fears. But when you can do that with a trusted friend and a mentor, it does something to the brain and to the heart. I've experienced that numerous times. So I want a man of God, someone who will speak truth to me. I want a man who has the courage to be real. Tell me about your own junk. If you're my mentor and if you act like you have it all together, I don't need you in my life as a mentor because first of all, that's not truth. That's not reality. I learn so much more at times from a man who will be honest about his own struggles, his own challenges, his own sins, and how he has walked through them and walking through them. I also want someone who is respectful, someone meaning someone I can look up to. And one of the biggest things that I, I can look up to is when someone, another man, is humble. And it's not weakness. It is hum true humility. There is such true confidence and strength found in true humility. And God talks about that in the Bible as well, that actual real humility is actual, is actually strength. So someone who's respectful, someone I can look up to. I want someone that I could submit to. 
And I don't, again, I don't wake up as a man going, who do I get to submit to today? But when there's a man in my life who is trustworthy, I believe he listens to God, he has the courage to be real and transparent, that I I have no problem submitting to that man and saying, this is what I'm, what's going on. Give me some insight. Give me direction. And I will submit to that. I also want a man who is assertive, who is deliberate, and who is intentional. This is so critical for me. One of the biggest challenges that I face in life is, I guess, not challenges. One of my, one of my biggest frustrations, I guess I would say, is dealing with the idea of men being passive in our culture in our society. It drives me crazy. It's not a criticism, but I have not had many good role models of men in my life who were assertive, uh, deliberate, and intentional. It, it is so critical when a man chooses to be passive, and I believe that that passivity comes from fear, but when a man chooses to be passive in his marriage, in his relationship with his children, on the job, with his own personal life, he will impact a lot of other people in a negative way. Years ago, as I was processing the idea of being assertive, and I thought about the word of catalyst. So I, I had this image of these all these men sitting in this log cabin, and it could be women, but because I'm, I'm a man, I'm going to speak from a man's perspective on this episode. We're all sitting in this log cabin, and we want to be together. It's a men's retreat, let's say, but it is freezing inside. And there's a beautiful fireplace sitting there, but there's no fire. There's wood, and everyone's sitting around freezing. And the catalyst, the man who chooses to be assertive, deliberate, and intentional, would be the one to get up, walk over to the fireplace, pick up the box of matches, strike the paper, put it on the wood, and within minutes, you would have a roaring fire, which would impact every man in that room. Every man would be physically warmed because of the intentionality of that man. That is a simple illustration, but it but it resonates with me, and I hope it resonates with many of you. The world is waiting for men to stand up and be assertive, be intentional, and be deliberate. There's no arrogance in this. You can be assertive, deliberate, and intentional with no arrogance. I don't have time for arrogance, but I want to be around men who take the initiative. Another aspect I want in a, uh, a mentor for myself, I want a man who sees the big picture, uh, someone who is a bit of a visionary, who can see beyond the present, the current circumstances, who can dream with me. And you may not need this, but for me, I am a visionary. I'm a dreamer, and I see potential in, in so many things. And so I want to be able to sit down with this man, this mentor, and not be embarrassed to say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm hoping for. I know it may look crazy. I may not, I know that it may sound like it's out of the mainstream, but if, as I pray about things and I believe God gives me an idea or a thought or a vision or a purpose in something, I want to pursue it. And I want a mentor who will believe with me to go, well, Chris, I don't know how that's going to happen but let's let's process it together. An example I have, I have a few over the years of my life, but when I lived in Vienna, Austria with my family many years ago, I remember I had a supervisor and said, okay, as an American, how are you going to impact this culture? Well, my wife and I had been mentors for many years, and I told him, I believe that I'm going to have an impact in this culture by the mentoring work that we do. And my supervisor looked at me at the time. He was an American. And he said, well, that doesn't fit this culture because people, Austrian men as a whole, will not open up and talk to you about their personal lives. And I was discouraged for just a moment. And I thought, wow, okay, maybe I'm wrong. I've come to this new culture. Am I bringing my own American culture with me? Yes, I did to a certain point. But I I thought, wait a minute. Mentoring is about authentic relationships. And that's how God has created us. And so I I listened to the supervisor who had been in Austria for many years and had much more experience in the culture than I did at that point. But he said, but you know, if anybody can do this and see us succeed, Chris, I believe you can do this. 
Well, that, that encouraged me greatly. But I also thought, if God is not bigger than a culture, if God is not bigger than cultural dynamics, then I serve a false God, a weak God. And I thought, God can overcome anything in my life, or he can enable me to overcome anything. And so what happened over time, living in a a culture different than my own, living in a culture where I did not initially speak the language, which is German, over time through mentoring, God opened up so many doors of meaningful relationships through mentoring. And had I listened to the supervisor at the time, had I listened to society, had I listened to my own doubts, I don't think I would have pursued it. But what God did was amazing, and I'm still amazed at it. I, I remember thinking, how am I going to reach this culture? And there were five areas that I felt like God wanted me to focus on uh, it, with mentoring. It was, it was going to be the police department, the fire department, business, other nonprofits such as, such as social organizations, and the university. And I thought, okay, that's a huge vision. And I remember I doubted it quite a bit initially. But over time, I got I saw God open up doors time and time again. And within about three years, God had opened up doors in these five areas with, with meaningful relationships through mentoring. And so let me go back to the topic of this episode. What I wanted in a mentor, I wanted someone who would see the big picture with me, who would dream with me. And so Man, as you're needing a, and wanting a mentor, part of it hopefully would be that you want to see yourself grow and develop and see some open doors for yourself in some areas that maybe you did not think were possible before. Another aspect of a mentor that I want, I want someone to challenge me. I don't want them to just listen to everything I say and say, oh, that sounds good. That's good enough. Way to go. I want that, but I want someone to challenge me and say, Chris, I think you're you're remaining in your, in your comfort zone too long here. I think you need to take a chance. I think you need to step out. I love that. Now, hear me on this. I say I want to be challenged, but when it pulls me out of my comfort zone, it will make me nervous as well. But again, if you have a trusted mentor who wants the best for you, then for them to challenge you is really a wonderful thing. And I wrote it down on the list. I want a mentor who will kick my butt if he needs to. To say, Chris, that's not acceptable. Or you're being passive. Or you're not trying hard enough. Or you're giving up. Or you're you're just staying in your comfort zone. I want a, a mentor, a man in my life, who would kick my butt because he cares about me. This ties in with it as well. But I want a man, a mentor, who will blow the whistle when necessary. Say, okay, we need to stop. You're going the wrong direction. Or maybe your thinking is off, Chris. Maybe your emotions are too tied into this situation. But a a guy who will blow the whistle on me, as I mentioned earlier, a man who is humble. When a man is humble, he becomes so real to me. And he will, again, be transparent. He will share his own journey with me. He will share his strengths with me. Another thing I want, I want a man who will choose to really know me and care about me. Yes, there are really important life coaches. There are business mentors. But what I'm talking about with real life mentoring is is the holistic aspect of a mentor. Someone who will know the whole care about knowing the whole person. And so I want my mentor to to choose to really know me and to care about me. And in order for him to do that, he needs to know my story. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And that takes a while. That takes time. So a man who will take time and again and again to listen to aspects of my story so he knows me well. I would like a guy who would honor my trust and confidentiality. Some things that are going to be said in a mentoring relationship may be painful, may be embarrassing, may cause some anxiety to even say them. And uh, I want to know that a mentor will honor my trust in him and will keep things confidential unless I give him permission. I tell men all the time when we begin a, a mentoring relationship, I tell them, here's, here's a few uh, beginning guidelines. Trust and confidentiality are a must to be built. And uh, I will not share anything you share with me unless you give me permission to do so. 
Shame and guilt are never allowed. And so I need someone who I can really trust and who I know will keep things confidential. And at the time, and I would still like this, I needed a mentor who had business experience, someone who had experience starting a company or a nonprofit. And I say that because when my wife and I started this nonprofit that we lead today called Fahrenheit Real Life Mentoring, I had no background in business. I had no background in starting a nonprofit. And so to have a man in my life who would mentor me, who would give me insight to his his own journey, Chris, do this, don't do this, consider this, that is still something that I need on a on an ongoing basis. And so, yeah, there's so much more. But at the end of the day, I want a man who will really choose to get to know me and care about me. And when a man knows me and cares about me, then these other areas, these other things that I want and need in a, a mentor are so much uh, more easily attained. So as you are thinking about having a mentor, first of all, it takes courage to ask for that, usually for men more so than women, I believe. It takes humility because when you say you need a mentor, you're saying, I don't have it all figured out. I don't have all the answers. Guys, guess what? No one does. And the sooner you can admit that and embrace that, man, the sooner you're going to be able to grow and develop as a person yourself. And so if I can give you advice, humble yourself and say, what do I need and want in a mentor? And then go after it. Find someone. Maybe it's on the job. Maybe it's within your extended family. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's someone in the church. Look around and make a list. Does this person have at least some of these qualities that I would need and want in a mentor? And if they do, go after them and say, look, would you consider this? And I can tell you, I continue to be so encouraged, thankful, blessed by being a mentor to others and the times that people have mentored me. I believe God has made us to need one another. And it is so incredible when relationships can be built between a mentor and a mentee where trust and and care are given and anything in the world, anything can be laid on the table and talked about. It's really a beautiful thing to have these meaningful relationships. Life is about relationships at the end of the day. So thank you for listening and we will catch you next time. We want to thank you as always for listening. If today was helpful, if something that you listened to was helpful, we would really love it if you would go to Apple or Spotify, leave us a review, download, subscribe, and for all things related to podcast, if you'd like to give a financial contribution to help us continuing bringing this sort of broadcasting to you, just go to Fahrenheit Mentoring org. Hi, this is Chris Corral, producer of the Fahrenheit Real Life Mentoring Podcast. This podcast is produced through a partnership with the Confetti Corral Boutique and Michelle Corral Realtor. To find out more about these businesses who support our vision and ministry, go to confetticorral.com or find them on Facebook.